In this episode of the Leadership Speaks, I chat with Tara Singh Bachani, Vice Chairperson for Max India, Max Group's holding company for its senior care business. She is the Executive Chairperson for Antara, an integrated service for provider for all senior care needs. Antara derived from the Sanskrit word Antar, mean the difference. Is Tara Bachani's vision come to life? Her company aims to make the difference and to enhance in quality of life for senior citizens. She sees senior living and life care as an untapped business segment with huge potential, while ensuring that the spirit of caring does not get lost in pursuit of profit. Tara Vachani is an outstanding leader and a role model amongst young women entrepreneurs. She's 2020 member of Young Global Leaders, a part of the reputed World Economic Forum. As a female leader, she believes that women have the same right to succeed as men do while maintaining a stronger sense of empathy and emotional connect with employees and customers. Let's hear Tara Vachani's leadership story with a difference in this episode of Leadership Speaks. So my first question for you is, until Antara came about, the idea of senior living was still very latent and still fresh in India. What went into creating Antara and how did your company try and change that mindset and sell the idea of senior living? And that's a really good question, Rehan. And I think a 10-year journey has finally been able to give me those insights. Um, you know, we were very convinced at the get-go that um, this entire demography needed products and services, which frankly didn't exist at all in an organized or even frankly a disorganized way when we started. Um, but all of our primary, secondary research, our intuitive common sense, all of these things convinced us that I think there is a huge demand that will emerge for a trusted, well-respected brand. So we just kept at it. It was very challenging to convince people to have conversations. Um, so I think the way in which we created an awareness of this entire space was threefold. One was obviously just conversations and dialoguing uh, with the end user, with their families, with advocacy groups, etc do all of our marketing and communications because the truth was that we were building a category. So we had to be very explicit with what we stood for. Um, and three was really building a community of people who then spoke for us and on our behalf. Uh, so it's taken us, I would say, for people today to really know this industry. It has taken um, a good seven to eight years for people to understand that there is now a formal organized senior care and elder care industry. Right. I think if you uh, put it in comparison to the US where there are almost 20,000 senior living units compared to America, to Delhi or India, sorry, which mm -hmm. has almost 700, just the convincing part would have been so tough for your business. So that leads me to my next question, which are there are approximately 750 senior living units in India. What are the key differences between Antara and those seven and the other 749? How right. were those key points developed over time? Was it personal experience, international exposure, research? Sure. So I think to begin with, and, and if I talk about the early years for us, right? I think to begin with, I would say that uh, when we entered the market, uh, we were definitely the most expensive and the most holistic offering. And therefore, that's what set us apart, apart at that point from all the other players. Um, and not expensive because in a way we chose to be, but because our offerings were so vast and so deep 
that there was obviously a price and a cost to it. Um, the second big difference to us, so one was the fact that we were the most holistic. We had the most range of services, products. Uh, we had paid a lot of attention to architecture and design um, and all our offerings of community building and from lifestyle to life care. So that was one big difference. Two was therefore an outcome of that, which was price point. Three, I think to begin with, when we started, most of the players were real estate players who were offering this almost as an extension to their real estate offering and speckling it a little bit with services. Since then, I have to say that at the end of the day, um, players have upped the game, which is fantastic because I think the more players, the better for the industry and the country. So other players have now started offering more services. They have tie up with healthcare operators to focus more on the healthcare pieces. But I think we are still in that sense, the most extensive offering and definitely still therefore in a way, the most premium that exists. Um, and our focus, because we are not a real estate company, we are a services, wellness, healthcare company. Uh, our focus and bhavna is still very much to impact quality of life. And I think therefore, that's really what will consistently set us apart um, from a lot of the other players. That's amazing. And you talk about how long it took to create Anthara and now you're talking about your focus ahead. Do you have any specific five-year goals for your company, Anthara? Maybe yes. So actually what's been very interesting for us, Rehan, is when we started Antara in 2010, at that time we launched what we call the Residences for Seniors Vertical. Uh, so the pilot of that was in Dehradun. We created a you know 200 apartment community uh, where people bought in aspirationally and then transitioned knowing that all the services and products over their years would facilitate a very healthy, happy aging in place. So that was the vertical. We always had dreamed of expanding to other product and service lines. Uh, but truthfully, the first five, six years, one was so focused and preoccupied with making just that one community perfect, at least as perfect as we could, that we didn't have the bandwidth to expand. But since 2019, we've been on a massive expansion mode. So within the residences vertical, we have actually... Um, now another project which is in noida in the ncr and hopefully we will have more projects this year and next year so we will have more residents like communities we launched uh, the three verticals one which is care homes which is actually 25 to 35 bedded facilities in the heart of cities for, to begin with in delhi so in greater kailash and gurgaon and those care homes service a more senior senior who's looking for short term medium term or long term clinical services round the clock. Uh, we then have home care. So we actually go into people's existing homes and service them with 15 different services from nursing to physiotherapy to whatever. And lastly, we launched a vertical in Medcare products where we sell um, essentially B2C medical equipment and devices because we believe that the combination of these four is what we want want to be which is if the best ecosystem um, for seniors in the country so the next five years is going to be spent deepening each of these verticals and hopefully also expanding geographically outside of the ncr wow that's amazing i think if all the senior living companies did the same and went by the same and kept expanding we're going to be soon and catching up to the us in no time i hope so yeah i hope so It'd be super if we can yeah. So my next question is that there are 21,000 senior living units in the USA. And the first one was created in the year 1981. Today, India has almost 750. Do you feel in five to 10 years, we'll at least have 25% of the amount that the US has? I think so. I think we will because um, I think that this, this whole category is hotting up. Um, it started attracting a lot more excitement. It's attracting investment. It's attracting partnerships. It's attracting lots of mergers and acquisitions. And like all other industries in India, when the consolidation happens and the capital starts coming in, there's nothing stopping us from execution. Um, so I think India has all the ingredients now to catch up. Uh, it has the category awareness, it has the capital, like I mentioned, and it has players who are now excited by the space. And I think that sort of intersection of these three things, we will 
uh, we will catch up. I think the only thing that will come in the way of this happening will be if policy and advocacy doesn't catch up as fast. Because today still, um, we don't have a proper category or even a, forget a ministry. I mean, that's a whole other ball game. But we don't even have subcommittees or subcategories in the government or bureaucracy that talk about organized for profit senior care. So there are no regulatory bodies, there are no policies that have come into place. Um, so I think if that doesn't catch up, that could be the one thing that sets us back. But if a lot of us private players push also for that to happen, then I think that will also help um, in a big way to advance this entire sector. That's great to hear that India is slowly, uh, slowly developing. And hopefully we'll be soon almost near the US in the amount of senior living. So my next question is, obviously you are the leader of Antara and your leadership style and how you lead others, is it different from your male counterparts? Um, you know, I think I have had the luxury of not necessarily needing to ever distinguish um, between genders in my organization. I know that that disparity um, and those challenges exist uh, cross-sector, uh, cross city, cross country, uh, and but my personal experience, to be very honest with you, is and I think it's been because I have had a leadership position in my organization that I've never stopped back and take you know looked around as to how my um, leadership style is different from a gender point of view. So I think that question is a little harder for me to answer from a gender point of view, but. If the question was, how has my leadership style been different to, let's say, people I've observed um, in my years, uh, I think I operate uh, with a lot more um, EQ and softness when it comes to people. And this has also been a big learning of mine that I think achieving that balance is important between EQ and IQ. Uh, and I think my natural instinct has always been um, to watch out for people and their needs before actually the needs of outcomes in the organization. So I think one big learning for me is a little bit more tough love um, would have probably been better. Uh, and I think over the years, I've then started to implement some of those learnings. I mean, that's amazing to hear. And about the gender disparity, that's great that you've never seen that. And that just shows how much how India is improving in that sector. Yeah. So my last and final question of this part is, what is your number one tip for youngsters like me who wish to be entrepreneurs later in life? Yeah. Um, so it's hard to summarize it in one tip. So if I'm allowed to do three, I, I would yeah, like to do that. So one is obviously be very, very convinced of your idea, right? And um, because that conviction is the only thing that's going to get you out of bed every day and keep at it and if it takes long for that conviction to set in and a lot of homework so be it but be super super convinced of the idea two would be to be very practical with capital i know in today's day and age you know we see all of the unicorns who just in a way spent so much amount of money and got their valuations my belief is if you want to be an entrepreneur in the long run and you are trying to impact the country, you're trying to impact society, as well as, of course, create wealth and recognition for yourself. I think that game is a bit longer. And for that game to therefore be long drawn, I think you have to be sensible with how you deploy capital. I'm not saying conservative, but sensible. Um, and three, really know your market and your customer. Really, like spend that time understanding that if I'm creating a product or a service, what is going to make my customer buy it and why and at what price? Um, and I think if these three things intersect, um, thankfully, it'll only be onwards and upwards. Definitely. Passion, conviction, number one, knowing your market and just not being sensible and being sensible with the capital that you're willing to spend on your company as the three most important things. Thank yes. you so much for letting me know that and I'll definitely keep that in mind. My pleasure. And that concludes my chat with Ms. Tara Vajani. Here are two of my key takeaways from my chat. First, being more expensive than competitors can also be a winning differentiator if it communicates better value. 
We often hear how businesses use cutthroat pricing and deep discounting to track customers and grab market share. But sometimes being more expensive sets you apart from all the existing players. A top end range of service offerings cannot possibly be cheap. And today's smart buyers understand the value they get in return. Second, in the long game, you need to conserve capital till you reach stability. Entrepreneurs and startup founders need to be practical and realistic. Business is a long game and the risk is that we might run our money too fast, then lose hope and give up. But those of us who conserve capital to reach stability will very likely reach their goals. This is my 15th interview with leaders who have inspired me with their amazing life stories. If you enjoyed watching, please do hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. I'll be releasing my next Leadership Speaks podcast very soon. Till then, think positive, have big goals and focus on the road ahead.